Hi folks, welcome to this video on accounts receivable and calculating some ratios. So here I just um, relayed out all the information in the question and you can tell they started off with some opening balances from the current asset and current liability section of Lando Corporation at the end of December 2009. And then it said here that during the subsequent year it gave you some information about sales and how many were, how many um, uh, uh, how many, much of the sales were made on credit of this 465,000. You'll notice here we changed out an account receivable for a note receivable with a customer and again it's an interest bearing note so we're going to have to record some interest receivable separately and not into the note. Um, Lando collected 160,000 in trade accounts receivable. We also had a sales return here and we also need to adjust the allowance account. All right, so now at the end of 2010, uh, we're giving you some balances for some of the current assets and current liabilities as well. So what we want you to do is to make journal entries for 2010 to record some of the um, stuff that happened during 2010. Also calculate the um, current ratio and the accounts receivable turnover ratio for Lando at December 31st, 2010. And to comment on liquidity and um, uh, liquidity of the company and as well the um, uh, giving you some information on the receivables turnover ratio last year compare it to it would, what it would be this year. So now let's begin. Now if we want to do our, uh, our journal entries again of our 465,000 we were told that some was on credit so the balance must have been for cash. We were also told that we exchanged a $50,000 accounts receivable to something more legally enforceable, promissory note, so we're going to debit the note receivable 50000 And we also know that during the year we collected cash of 160000 on the accounts receivable that were still outstanding. We also know that customers had returned some goods. We weren't going to give them a cash refund, but we did credit their account. So we're going to credit accounts receivable and debit the sales returns and allowance account. And again, $2,000 is a very small amount in comparison to four sixty-five. dollars So again, we can see it's immaterial. So crediting the receivables account directly is not a problem. Now what we need to do is we know that on this note receivable, when it was made at June 30th, there was also 11% interest on the note. Now we said in class before and many times pre in previous courses that interest rates are always stated annually. So that being the case, we're going to multiply the face value of our note by 11% and then multiply it by 6 over 12 because the note only began to exist on June the 30th, which is only, so it only, um, it was only outstanding for the last six months from, from July the 1st to December 31st. So we want to calculate interest for half the year or six months of the 12. So we're going to come up with 2750. The other thing we noticed here in the question was that we needed to make sure that the balance for the allowance for doubtful accounts had a balance of 3500 and we knew now it was only sitting at 2500 so we need to make an adjustment to put $1,000 into the bad debt expense and uh, increase the allowance by $1,000. So now, the other thing that we want to do here is we want to um, calculate the um, current ratio for both the uh, at 2010 December 31st and 2009 December 31st. So now if we calculate our current ratio at the end of December 2010 we know that's current assets divided by current liabilities. So now where did the elements here that I've listed in the numerator here where did they come from? Well you've got 18,000 um, that you The 18,000 that you have here comes from your question. Uh, we told you up here in the question that um, Lando had cash of 18,000 at the end of 2010, so we're going to put that there. We also know that the accounts receivable were 42,000. Now, if you go back here at the end of the, at the information they gave you, they didn't tell you that it was 42,000, but in fact you can work through a T account. Now, um, if you want to work through the T account, it started at forty thousand, and it it comes up to a balance of four forty two thousand. 
what I what I just took a moment to do there, folks, is just to show you or draw out a T account to show you how the forty two thousand comes about. So what I did uh, here is I just put together a quick T account while I paused the video. So we were given in the question that you started off with forty thousand. That was data in the question, and you knew again that you swiped out or you exchanged an account receivable for a note receivable. So when we did that journal entry up here, you remember that the note the account receivable was decreased. By fifty thousand, we also know that during the year they were increased by two hundred and fifteen thousand to record the credit sale. These are the cash collections in two thousand and ten. This was the sales return and allowance, the impact on the receivable, and this one here, the thousand dollars was the adjustment we made to the allowance for doubtful accounts. Don't forget the receivables account balance that we started with in the question was at net. It said it here it was at net, so everything is net of the allowance. So we're just going to make sure that we adjust it out. So when we credit the allowance, we would, we would reduce the net receivable by a thousand dollars. So that's going to give you forty-two thousand at the end, and you're going to use that here. The twenty-seven hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, if you went back up here, this is your interest receivable, which was now created at the end of December, so it needs to be added in here. All right, to calculate the current ratio. The 50,000 is the note receivable, and the 80,000 here is what they had given you for um, interest in the question. So here they had told you that, um, that the, or sorry, inventories, inventories were 80,000. We're going to use the 70,000 for accounts payable and the 16,000 for other current liabilities to put in our denominator here. And so therefore, we're going to come up with a current ratio at the end of 2010 of 2.241. Again, you can do this to two decimal places if you like. It's not a problem. If we're going to do the same calculation at the end of 2009, we can use the data that we were given in the question. So remember this data was your cash, your receivables at net, and this was your inventory, and that was to start the question at the beginning of 2009. So we're just up here, right? And then your denominator would be your accounts payable and other current liabilities to begin to, uh, to begin at the end of 2009, which are here. And that's going to give us a current ratio of 1.813. To calculate the accounts receivable turnover, we just did it for one year because that's what we were asked to do. And we can use the calculation net credit sales divided by our average accounts receivable at net. Well, we know that our receivable started with 40,000 at the beginning of, or at the end of 2009. And at the end of 2010, again, going back to our T account here, it's 42,000 at net. Adding them together and dividing by two and using that denominator, and calculating a numerator of 213,000 for our net credit sales, that's going to give us 5.2 times. Or if we took this and wanted to know how many days on average our receivables turned over, it would be around every 70 days. And we can get this as we did it in class and as you probably did it in CB 101, 365 divided by your times during the year that the receivables turned over. So on average, they're turning over every 70 days. Now, before we move on, I just want to explain a little bit about how we got this 213,000. It may not be evident to some students, but if you look up here, um, we had accounts receivable of 215,000, all right? And uh, then what we did is we credited it uh, $2,000. So when we look at your net credit sales, okay, or your, um, uh, your net credit sales for the period, your credit sales of this 465000 were 215 right? Less the um, sales returns and allowances that you had here, which is a contra account to your credit sales revenue of 2000 that net that 215 which is also in here net and you net out 2000 there that's going to give you your 213000 so just in case that wasn't clear all right now if we have to do an analysis of uh which they ask us to do to comment on the liquidity given that uh they had a target you remember in the question they did have a target for their um collection period for receivables being 65 days 
So if we go in and look at our data, we can see that the current ratio is higher in 2010 that we, than it was in uh, 2009, the end of 2009. So that's looking a little bit worse, which is not really what we want. But, uh, and it also says that the accounts receivable turnover 4.9, it's slightly higher than 4. Point, or sorry, that should be 5.2. 5.2 is higher than 4.75, all right? Um, but it does say here that while the current ratio is higher, when we use this information here, the 4.75 and the 5.2, which are the uh, times, number of times that the inventory turns during the year, we actually see that um, in 2010, using this 4.75, our... Um, our days that our receivables are outstanding, or our days it takes to collect receivables is really 70 days. And how we get that is we can take 365, 000, uh, 365 days, okay, and we can divide that by uh, 5.2, right? And that would give us 70 days, right? And it was 77 in 2009. And that was because we had 365. Versus what we had in, um, OK. And in um, uh, 2009, in 2009, we had uh, 4.75 here. should be a bracket, okay, um, versus 277 uh, in 2009, all right? So again, um, Lando, that was the receivables uh, uh, turnover last year, 4.75, so that was in 2009. And this year, they were targeting a collection, um, a period that the receivables stayed in collection of no longer than 65 days. So again, you can see here that we really got um, um, 70 days, which is not exactly where we wanted to be. We wanted to get it from 77 days, uh, that it's taking us on average to collect receivables to 70 days. So while there's improvement, all right, um, it's still not where we need it to be. So maybe one of the things that Lando needs to think about is how are they going to collect money faster from their customers? Because as of yet, they're still not collecting it fast enough. You can see in this question, they didn't say anything about offering sales discounts. Maybe that's one of the things you might recommend. But again, they didn't uh, say, uh, there was no indication that they were actually uh, uh, granting sales discounts. So that might be one thing they could do in order to spur uh, uh, collection of sales a little bit, make it a little bit faster. So in any case, this concludes our presentation on the question for accounts receivable and ratio calculation.